I'll come early for the clarinets. Well, there were woodwinds for like a second. Ooh. Ooh. What do I mean? Eating chocolate? I don't remember this part of Beethoven. Any reason why classical today? <laughs> um, because of the... Um, DMCA bot thingy going around on Twitch where I think it's Warner Music and Universal, two really, really, really big companies that own properties, that own labels, that own music. It's like, hey, streamers with any sort of clip or VOD or highlight between 2017 and 2019, Fuck you and everything. You get a copyright strike. You get a copyright strike. You get a copyright strike. And then after three strikes, you're literally terminated off Twitch. Um, some of my stuff violates it, but they seem to only be going after bigger people. But it's enough that everybody's really panicking. Like, Just Dance streamers, karaoke streamers... I'm not too sure what to do about the Kingdom Hearts music personally because that's always already been an issue. Um, so my stuff I use is like lo-fi and DJ remixes, but even like if you get enough of that copyrighted audio sample in there, they can yoink it. And um, they haven't done it yet, but legally there there was some lawyer who was talking with some partnered streamer, streamer about it and I was watching a video before stream. Um, they have the power to come in and copyright strike you live and terminate your account live. So if your third strike happens in the middle of a video, they cut you right there. So do I need to play music over games when playing? Um, game music is fine. No, game music is fine. It's for like, if I had Nicki Minaj or whatever playing during the, the timer or while I was talking just as background music. Um, game music is seemingly fine. The one exception I can think of being Kingdom Hearts, because that's always been a copyright nightmare, but like in terms of Just Dance or whatever, they're, yeah. Yeah, game music, it's fine. It's just like music music, like radio music, like, I don't know, Ariana Grande, but then it's like if you're doing karaoke, if you're doing Twitch Sings, if you're doing Just Dance, Guitar Hero, what are you gonna do? I don't know. Tuesday, did you hear about Persona 4 and PC? John Cena! I literally just messaged our friend group earlier saying I would shit for Persona 4 on PC. I would poop my pants. <laughs> so is it official official? Because I haven't played 4 yet and I really want to. Uh, something we were discussing though is what about game music that uses the music that's also separate from the game like Death Stranding? That, I can't even con- I can't even- Oh, um... I can't even contemplate that level. I haven't even thought about that. Not yet. They're probably gonna announce it Saturday. Yeah, I heard- Fudge. I just scratched my arm. I have this scar that keeps splitting and I totally just scratched it. Um... Oof, Climax. Stream DB. I'm just getting an error occurred. Oh! Oh, I see, I see. Can we have 1812 Overture next? I was thinking Mozart next. Or perhaps some fine Ty Tchaikovsky. Um, but yeah, Shay, basically my point of using Beethoven is that it's royalty free and I think I'm funny. <laughs> um, a lot of people provide like electronica or EDM or lo-fi royalty free and you know I love lo-fi, but um, I thought using Beethoven was funny. So yeah, <laughs> here we are. Um, yeah, I don't know about Death Stranding. I don't know, I was like, ready to delete everything before stream and then I was like hmm let me think a minute let me let me think before I do this because you you gotta do it off YouTube too you gotta take everything down off YouTube as well um, I found three tracks that are royalty and copyright free and have stuck with that to be safe sir Wales what the fuck is up how are you oh my gosh that's a 
I haven't seen that name in a while. Also, are we loving this Beethoven like opera shit with the emote explosion on my face? Sir Wales, do you like my DMCA royalty free backtrack here? <laughs> um Oh, I like that. All oh, those are cute emotes. Fuck DMCA, yeah. Fuck DMCA. Yep. It literally just feels like a company making a cash grab because Corona and they need money, so I don't fucking know. I like it. Some class for that ass. Yeah. Tired with doing better. I really liked reading your post earlier, Shay, by the way. Um, but yeah, so that's, that's why we got some Beethoven. Um, but other than that, I think I just gotta get to Professor Layton. Um, I think that's, that's the big of it. That's the, that's the it. I'm trying to see if I can actually do a stream on Thursday or Friday. Also, Cher tell Jerry to look at his messages. I'm trying to ask him something. Is that Fig Leaf? That is Fig Leaf. I'll get to you in a minute, dude. He'll get to you in a minute, dude. Is what he says. Um, don't you love it how it feels really nice out today, but at night it feels muggy? I'm so confused because it's getting hot during the day, and then last night I was chilly. Wait, why are you playing AC? I'm not. Oh, fuck. I didn't mean to do that. Shite. My B. Thank you. Um, shoot, I haven't done the wedding challenge yet today. I'll have to go in there and throw some shit in the room. Because I really like all the wedding stuff. Wow, good call. Uh, <laughs> oops. <laughs> um, yeah, so how's everybody? Wedding challenge. Um, one of the things in, in Animal Crossing right now is you go to Harv's Island, which is like... Um, Harv's Island, it's like the little area where you can go just take photos all willy-nilly and use all your furniture and stuff. <laughs> um, I don't know how to describe the wedding challenge, but basically two characters from previous games um, show up there and you have to decorate a room with the theme for their wedding. So she's like, I want a pink and white ceremony that's cute, or I want a pink ceremony that's chic, or a reception that's pink, I don't know. And you, you just, you decorate a room, you take a fucking picture, and she's like, hey girl, why don't you have a piece of cool limited furniture? And I'm like, yeah. Anyway, it's dumb. Um, <laughs> it's dumb. Um, that was the worst explanation of the wedding challenge. I thought you and Jerry were gonna do wedding challenges. No! <laughs> no, but, but, I keep getting, I keep, I'm like, dress shopping soon, which will be lots of fun. I have, like, a folder of, like, dresses I like and everything that I sent to the store, so I'm very excited. Um, yeah, no, it's just you decorate a room with unlimited furniture inventory and then you take a picture and it scores you and then you get stuff. How's the whole COVID situation in Massachusetts? Massachusetts is actually quite terrible. We're not like, what kind of game is this? This is a puzzle mystery game. Um, there have been six or seven latent titles before this one and they were primarily on the DS. So basically, you're in a story, and there's a mystery, um, and to solve the mystery, you wander around getting clues. But to get your actual clues, um, you solve puzzles, and they're actually like random logic puzzles. Um, yeah, Massachusetts COVID was one of the wor we were one of the worst states, not like top five, I think. No, we might have been three for a while, and I think what the issue is, is that we just have a high concentration of elderly, we have a high concentration of hospitals that deal with really intense diseases and issues and stuff. I swear I need to change my username color, I always get skipped over. Wedding challenge, why say the same thing twice? I don't get it. <laughs> we also live on the coast, so we have people coming from the east, yeah. Um, but yeah, Massachusetts in particular was pretty bad. And then we had that big Biogen conference where it spread a lot. 
And then there was like the group of kids from New Hampshire, I know, who had just visited Italy, who came back through Boston, and that like really kicked us off. Um, I meant that organizing any wedding is a challenge. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry. I, I truly- I saw it and like glazed right over. Um... Because I didn't get it. Um... Yeah, COVID here is pretty bad. But with my health issues and then Jerry's mom's health issues, we're kind of like not... going out... at all. And it's- it's... I'm, I'm having a lot of really odd mental days where I just randomly flail around the house crying. That was me yesterday. Um, yeah. Anyway, I believe he came home from China. Oof. My, um, my friend's sister was one of the first kids in New Hampshire. They had her picture on the front, front of the paper, and it was just her dramatically standing behind her screen door with her hand against it, making a sad face. It was the funniest shit. Oh my god, that was a funny picture. I know you said dress shopping, are you guys open now? So we're in phase two of being open and it's like a four, phase five phase plan where five is being open and normal. Um, yeah, so what I'm doing for dress shopping is I can only bring two people. One of them has to be able to physically get me in and out of a dress because the attendant won't touch me and then I have to have a call with them before my dress appointment and instead of me going around the store and shopping they're gonna pull things that they think I would like and have a bunch of stuff ready for me and then I have to wear a mask and I have to wear gloves and then they steam everything between every try on um so there's that plus I'm also gonna be wearing like undergarments and stuff um but yeah, it depends on different states, and honestly, I think we still need to be on lockdown because with all the Memorial Day people are just showing up now as positive tests, um, with fucking the protests, which rightfully should be done, there's gonna be a huge spike in cases. Never mind the dress, just wear a hazmat suit. <laughs> Very fair, but I'm getting married next September. Not this September, but 2021, so I think I'll be Gucci. And either way, I still want my fucking dress. Um, anyway, Professor Layton. Um, Professor Layton, so this is a puzzle. Um, originally it was Professor Layton, and now there was one trilogy, there was another trilogy, and now this is the third trilogy, and it's featuring his daughter, Catriel, who just opened her own detective agency, and now she's, um trying to solve a mystery. We already solved the one of the hands on Big Ben went missing. We solved that mystery. But it's not like actually solving the mysteries. It's like, oh, I found a clue. Let me solve this numbers puzzle. And then it'll tell me the clue after because that's apparently how the how clues are. Not gonna lie, I'm so fucking excited. For what? Uh, can't you postpone the dress fittings? I thought you guys were getting married till next year. Yeah, no, um, so my original plan wasn't to buy a dress until fall, um, but more than likely we'll be in a second lockdown in fall because of cold and flu season, there's gonna be a resurgence of COVID because viruses travel better in the cold. Um, so we're anticipating being in a second lockdown, and if that goes through the end of cold and flu season, that puts us in April. And for April 2021 to September is not enough time to buy a dress, have it made, and have it fitted. So we're going super early instead of super late. Super late. Um, oh, for my wedding! Yes! I hope you'll be excited. I hope. That's nice. That makes me happy. I'm like, Jerry, isn't it cool that I'm going dress shopping even though you can't be involved? Are you excited? He's like, yeah. Yeah, normally, Shay, you want to buy a dress eight to ten months out. But my point now is that I can always go early, but I can't exactly do too much if I'm late. I don't want to be, like, restricted. Plus, you know, if the dress's stores are open, it's supporting small businesses, which is important during COVID when anything's shut down. I need to get a tissue real quick. Please pardon me. I dusted today and I'm allergic to dust. I can like feel it coming in my nose. Hang on.
Je m'excuse. But yes, um, so that's why I'm getting a dress so early. <laughs> My parents got married after 11 months of dating and like six months of planning and they were gonna have it in March. But by then your mom was pregnant. Oh, cute. See, there are people like my parents who dated for a year, got engaged, and then planned their wedding in six months. My aunt planned her second one in a few. Jerry's mom had it. Like, I feel like it's like a generational thing, but for us, it was really, let's take a little time, get used to being engaged, and then take our time planning the wedding so we can like spread out paying everything, and it's working pretty well so far. Your hands still stink of bleach after I closed the toilet yesterday. Ew. I've been do so I, I'm doing my deep clean of our upstairs this week because it's my birthday Friday and we need a clean and I was like, what better motivation than me wanting to have a day off and not do any cleaning. So I'm getting everything clean before my birthday. And my hands split again. They were finally under control, no bleeding. And they started splitting again and I'm mad. People don't even get married after being engaged. It's all down to the person. But see, it's like I want to get married and now we're starting to look for our own place. So it's all cool and all well and good. Um, she's pregnant. I think she, gave oh, a poly Emory, poly relationship with a guy and a girl. And she just gave, she's pregnant. Oh, that's cool. See, I don't mind that. We had a friend in college who was Polly, so we were around it, and she and I love to, to goss. Don't you already have your own place? We live in like a grand, you could call it like a grandma flat in Jerry's mom's house. In-law suite. A what? In-law suite. Jerry calls it the in-law suite. I call it the grandma flat. The goss. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't that what's where you put grandma? Or the in-laws. Or the in-laws. <laughs> She's only 21. Okay, that is the thing. It looks cool to me. I should do like a walking tour when it's all cool, when it's all clean and shit. Right now I have some stuff out and I just did dusting today. Tomorrow we're cleaning off our desks and then Thursday I'm shampooing the carpet, the couch, and vacuuming and steaming. Um... It is cool, a maze on that. No, it's just more like above the garage. There's an extra living room, an extra bedroom, and an extra half bathroom that we use. <laughs> um, yeah, 21 is very young. <laughs> very young, no judgment, just on the age part a little. Um, but yeah, so. Um, but yeah, marriage, bringing people together. Trying to find a place during COVID, let me tell you. Crazy. There's not a lot going for sale, and everything that is going for sale is going really quickly, and it's all very expensive. So, we'll see what happens. But yeah, dress shopping! Let me just chocolate, and then I'll actually get to this mystery. Mm -hmm. Have I mentioned that I've been getting two periods a month? Two periods a month? Do you know how that happens? Because I fucking don't know how that happens. It sucks. That's good. Okay. I honestly think it's stress. Okay. Oops, I skipped a page. <clears throat> All right, so. The Elizabeth Tower, Big Ben. A head went missing. Turns out the clock regret. <laughs> oh my god. I'm out of breath. You're hearing so much with the gulping and swallowing. Oh no! I'm too flummy. <laughs> yeah, I think it's stress for me. Oh my gosh, I can see that you heard that gulp too. Um, the hand on the clock went missing. It turns out the clock repair guy Dropped it and broke it, so he had his twin brother, who is a fantastic baker, who makes cakes that are replicas of real things, make a wafer cake version of the clock hand to put on the clock, but then, of course, that wouldn't actually work. It got stuck behind the other hand. Everybody thought it was stolen. 
Patriel figured out it wasn't stolen. The hand was there. It was just made of cake, and then it melted in the rain. So ha ha ha. And then instead of the guy getting punished, they made another cake of the clock hand to serve to the French minister who was coming to visit. It was fucking weird. But anyway, anyway. <coughs> woo! Anyway, Catriel's like, okay, cool. That was my first mystery, and now I'm gonna go back to trying to solve better mysteries. <laughs> I'm so out of it right now. Um, she opened up a detective agency, and she has this little assistant dude who's not really her assistant, but he wants to be her assistant. He's totally in love with her. She couldn't give a fuck. In my head canon, she's ace. Um, and then she also has this dog named Cheryl, who has no memory, and he said, Ruff, Catriel, Ruff, I want you to rough solve the mystery of my identity, Ruff, Ruff, Ruff. Um, so she also has this dog who she wants to find the memories of, also the dog can talk to her. Curry, hi! What's up? I've been going crazy. Yes, I am chewing very loudly. I'm very self-conscious of my chewing sounds now. <gasps> Curry, how are you? How's life? Let me shout you out. How do I do that? Like that. Boom. Nailed it. Legend of Heroes, Trails of Cold Steel. I have no idea what that is. I've barely played any games yet. <laughs> Let me just eat this other chocolate. Mm-hmm. Mm. -hmm. mm. It's a JRPG. Mmm. John Cena just told me, and I saw my friends talking about it earlier. Persona 4 coming to PC. How are we feeling? Mmm. -hmm. I'm very excited. But if it's as emotionally intense as 5, I don't know if I could stream it. 5 really upsets me. <laughs> I still have to finish 5. I thought I was gonna sit down and play five the other day, but I like, couldn't do it. <clears throat> Catriel's intriguingly insightful investigation uncovered the truth of the agency's first case is closed. Here we go. Four is a lot more happy, at least more than five. See, Kabashida really freaked me out right off the bat. That was the first game I stream, actually was Persona 5. And a couple streams in, I just, I'm like, hey guys, I'm crying, goodbye. <laughs> Kamoshida? Isn't that the name of the first boss in Persona 5? Oh, no, 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 no. I started a, um, I started a new play for when I tried streaming it. I got to the, um, I'm about halfway through, I got to the, um, the Big Bang one. I think that's the sixth palace. And I got railroaded pretty hard by this one shadow and just need to do a lot of it again. Um, play Persona 3. I played Persona 3. 3 is the one I finished. Um, I actually didn't cry that much. And it's probably because I didn't play the answer. Um, and also because I took a year long break between <laughs> Not that much. I cried, but I played it halfway through, got overwhelmed, took a break, played it here and there, and then a year later sat down and finished it in two days. That tends to be my pattern with Persona games, I'm noticing, is that I'll play it, do a bunch, and then take a break for a little while. <clears throat> okay. The answer sucks, you weren't missing much. All it does is, like, confirm that blank is blank, which I'm just gonna... You know what I mean. <clears throat> How did you like the basket, Shell? Was it comfortable sleeping in there? Yeah, thanks, Ernest. Be it sleeping on the street, that's for sure. Or worse. Anything to stay out of the pound. Out of Battersea. Well, if there's anything else at all that you do need, let me know. I hear you're homeless at the moment, Shell. You're welcome to live here at the office for a while, if it would help. Uh, yes, Ruff. That memory loss thing is a really rough deal. Uh, I don't know who I am or where I come from. I just suddenly found myself wandering the streets. That's the first thing I remember. 
until you spotted one of our flyers and decided to enlist the services of the best detective in town. Yes, that was one of the leaflets I designed that you picked up, Cheryl. Miss Layton had done absolutely no advertising since she set up here, so I decided to take matters into my own hands. Although, we still haven't had any business. <coughs> How many of those have you had chocolates? Since I started stream, five. <laughs> all day, more than five. Now my mouth is all flummy and I'm like super aware of the mouth noises I'm making, like... Fizzy cans? Oh! This is my third, but it's seltzer water. And it's without sodium too, so it's not like I'm dehydrating myself or anything. You know, specifically this brand is only found in New England, and there's like a weird black market... Seltzer black market for this stuff, and people like buy it from out of state. Crazy price. It's stupid. <clears throat> black market self I am so tired. It's like people online will buy that off you second hand for like four times the price. People be dying over seltzer. You know what I mean? Oh my god, that's not what I meant! The the No, have I accidentally used a bat fuck? Help. Help. What's it what is the origin of that term? Now we have to do some Wordomology. Etymology? Underground economy or shadow economy is a clandestine market or series of transactions that has some aspect of illegality or is characterized by some form of non-compliant behavior with an institutional set of rules. I didn't. Don't worry. <laughs> it's okay. It's hilarious. No, literally. Like, if you're not in New England, there's like a weird... section of people who love seltzer so much that you... That selling seltzer... I'm tired. I'm full of boogers. Do you know how many times I've sneezed today? So many. So many. Look at me just shove that up my nose, guys. Look at- oops. Fuck, what is that? Look at how attractive that is. Yum. <laughs> my friends love seltzer. I don't love seltzer. I like LaCroix the best, but we're out. <laughs> oh, well. Excuse me for really being man's best friend, Ruff. Now, now, Shell. I didn't say I was dissatisfied. In fact, I plan to use your dogginess to the full. You do? Ruff, how? Ruff, actually, maybe I don't want to know. Um, I'm going to take a break from my job and eat some garlic bread. Um, you should have sent me some when your mom sent my ring. Thanks. Rude. <laughs> By having you do what dogs do best. <gasps> Using your nose. Following the scent of a villain from the scene of the crime, for example. Oh, I say, Miss Layton. What a champion idea. Oh my god, don't even. I'm so annoyed. Take a bread for break for garlic bread, prog. Are you gonna are you gonna break some bread? <laughs> hey! Reese's mom does. I bought something from her online. She makes jewelry. So I bought some jewelry. I just scratched my little head. <coughs> Why are you annoyed? Yes! Uh, um... I wanted to send you the Cadbury you like for your birthday, but the package was too small. Does, did you? Did she give it to you to take the post office? Just now, if you have my address, I have to freak out. Jerry's rule is like, don't put it online too much. You know, fuck it, Shay. I'll just give it to you. You didn't, <laughs> and it won't arrive until next week. I think it'll get held up in customs. It'll get held up in JFK. Message me later. It's like... What are you gonna do? What are you gonna do with it? I'll, I'll tell Jerry that I'm overruling him. <coughs> anyway... Did you see what your mom is doing, though? No, hang on. Am I even gonna play this game? 
I don't think so. What is your mom doing? I casually follow Reese's mom on Instagram. Let me see. Oh, um... That? Yes, I've like... See, the funny thing is, is all the bits that I've been through so far was at, through at the end of last stream. Which I think is pretty funny. So this is all technically a replay. <laughs> the first like five, the five minutes if I can ever get through it. Um, the TGC live thing in September, Royal Institution of Great Britain. That thingy. And then she's posting cat pics. She's gonna be at London Fashion Week. What? Um. What is that? Um. London Fashion Week? That's like a big effing deal, right? Her Insta is Dawn Howard Jewelry. Um, Dawn spelled like Dawn. Howard, H-O-W-A-R-D, and then jewelry spelled like British. So not like me. I would use one L. <laughs> like I would spell it. Okay. Yes, Shaw can perform police dog duties with his heightened sense of smell. He'll be a wonderful asset to the agency. I hate to rain on your parade, but this dog is no, 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 notable smells at all. Yeah, spelt like that. Spelt like British. I'd spell it with, um... This is how I would spell it. Where, where was my typer pointer? No. Not like that. Ignore. There we go. Color versus color. I spell it with a U. And I spell gray with an E. I'm very inconsistent. Sorry. That was too many no's. Are you telling us you can't smell anything? It's because Neopets. Neopets was started by two people who were English and then they lived in California. So like a handful of the words on Neopets were spelled like that. So I just like retained it. Because I lived on Neopets for like... God, five years solidly at least. Encoding everything is without a U because Americans apparently created coding languages. Oh! I didn't know that. That's interesting. <laughs> Not exactly. I mean, I can smell things, but no better than a human can, I'd say. Really? Oh, what a disappointment. I was thinking that I might actually find a use for you. Well, sorry, I'm such a letdown. Ruff. Never mind. I'm sure Shirl will prove useful in other ways. Oh, the phone. Get that, would you, Shirl? Why me? Well, if you can't help sniff out the truth, the least you can do is take phone calls for me. I'm a dog. I'll get it. It could be someone with a job for us. Hmm. What can I set you working on, Shirl? You'll have to pay your way somehow. Cleaning the toilet, perhaps? Or filing? No, your paws prohibit so many tasks. Oh! I've got it. You could be the latent detective agency mascot. We'll stand you on the prominent street corners, touting for business. Oh yeah, then I'll throw in a rough free massage as well. Rough. Ah, it looks like Ernest is finished on the phone. That was Inspector Hastings from Scotland Yard. Inspector Hastings, does he have a new case for us? A, a murder, actually. A murder? A big case at last. Well, yes, except, well, it seems it's it's not that simple. The inspector said it was probably a murder, but it might not be a murder. But actually, it seems it probably is a murder. Maybe. It's not that hard. Did somebody get killed by someone else, or did not they? I, I don't know, but the inspector wants you to meet him at Scotland Yard immediately. A murder that might not be a murder, but a murder that might be maybe. Well, it's certainly intriguing. I smell a mystery that needs unraveling. 15 hours? What the fuck? You're getting paid OT, right? Or like you're hourly, right? Please, yes. Je m'excuse. What's the matter with you? Urf. It's the last day of the Riverside Festival, that's all. I'd rather hope to invite you to accompany me to watch the show this evening, Miss Layton. Oh yes, I'd forgotten the festival was on at this moment. What kind of festival? 
It's a London tradition. It takes place on the banks of the Thames. It's a hoot show. There are street stalls serving food and drink and stage performances and, oh, it's all rather fun. <laughs> Goes on for a whole week, but today is the last day and, <coughs> whoo! As the climactic finish to the festivities, tonight will be the Riverside Show of Devotion. Yeah, sounds a real hoot. Oh, it really is. Lots of young men and women who are in love line up on opposite banks of the Thames to face each other and declare their mutual love. What? In front of everyone else, Ruff? Absolutely. They say that couples who declare their love at the Riverside Festival will find eternal happiness together, you see. Really? I had no idea about that part of the festival. It's jolly romantic, don't you think? I was hoping uh, to escort Miss Layton so we could watch the show together, but now... Did you say it happens every year? Oof, there's always the next one, Romeo. Oof, oof. Perhaps not, actually. Numbers have been dwindling in recent years, you see. There are rumors they might even abolish the festival altogether. This may well very well... May well very well... May very well be our last chance to experience it. I must admit, it does sound appealing. Really? The romance of it gets you all too, doesn't it, miss? Oh, joy. Ha. Huh? Sorry, Ernest. It's the food and the drink stalls you mentioned that have piqued my interest. <laughs> Ruled by your hunger, not your heart. You should be a dog. Food at festivals always tastes better for some reason, don't you think? It's the atmosphere, I suppose. Oh, yes, I um, couldn't agree more. It's sharing with someone special that really does it, isn't it? Yes, well, we mustn't keep Inspector Hastings waiting any longer, I suppose. Come along, you two. We need to pop over to Scotland Yard. Um, you said Thames, right? Hey, thank you. So, I got to this bit at the end of last stream, but I didn't get to a save screen, so we're repeating. And I was like, oh my god, is it Thames or is it Thames? So I just went with Thames. Limits you to 37 and a half hours. But it'll only count as 7.5. See, this is why I am hourly. Epsilon's really good at they're like, okay, you're hourly because you're new. And then after a year, you get to not be hourly. And they do it so people don't take advantage of you because they track all your shit. So they like would know if I went over. That's crazy, Reese. You're sure you, you can't get paid for that? A research assistant for a project related to the Mars rover. See, that's fucking cool as shit. Reese still won't tell me when he's going to send me to the moon or Mars or whatever, where I rightfully belong. Where I come from! <clears throat> Why do I need to come? Because you need to earn your keep. You're getting free lodging here at my office, remember? Unless you'd prefer the street corner advertising we discussed before. Uh, but the thing is, I usually have more time than necessary and procrastinate a punch, so I guess this is the other side of the coin. Yeah, whenever I, like, goof off during the day during work-from-home life, I'm like, I feel bad for logging this as work, and then there are times when I work late or I don't take a lunch and I'm like, alright, payback. <laughs> Seems to be pretty common in IT careers, at least. You have to data mine, like, 20,000 labeled images. Are they images of space? Are they images of space? We're in space. Zoom in and out properly. Space. Ooh. I'm a weirdo. <clears throat> I'll grab my lead. Ruff. Ruff. I'm starting to think I picked the wrong agency. Here we go. So this is where I ended last stream. It's a mock-up for Mars, but it's just one of the Canary Islands. Murder on the Thames. <coughs> so this is the famous Scotland Yard, is it? It's not much of a yard. It's not in Scotland either. As a dog who likes open spaces, both revelations are a bit of a disappointment. It's actually quite imposing, isn't it? I'll say, don't forget that the Metropolitan Police are responsible for keeping the peace across the entire city of London. This is a very special place, and not least because it's where Miss Layton and I first met. It's one of my most treasured memories. Such a fateful meeting, wasn't it, miss? This is no time for reminiscing, Ernest. Inspector Hastings has a possible murder, or maybe not, that he needs our help with. Come along, let's go in. Did you start saying it wrong way again? The Thames? Did I say Thames? Did I fuck up? 
I said thems. Thames. Thames. Oh, hello. Um, for, for Catriel, I'm really trying to think about the last time I watched Breakfast at Tiffany's. And she loves to talk like this. Is it Thames? Thames? I thought it was Thames. It's the Thames. I have a hard time taking the H out of it. The T. I can feel it on my tongue. Did I say Thames? Oh, I have to like think about it. It does not come naturally. <laughs> Do not call it the Thames. <laughs> I will not. Duly noted. Case codes have been added to Cat's bag. We're going into Scotland Yard, guys. What's her name? You were like Thames. What's the? Th I didn't say the thems, the theys, the theirs. I didn't say thems. I said Thames. With a th Thames is even worse than Thames. I didn't say Thames. I said Thames. Not thems. Not. Ifs, ands, or buts. I don't know. <laughs> Daily bonus. You've earned some fashion farthings. Um. <laughs> hello, hello, hello. What have we here? Catch me out late in the No less. Good to see you at the yard, ma'am. Inspector Ace thinks he's having investigating the case with a small team of officers. A select few, you might say. Ha ha ha. And after your brilliant performance on the Big Ben case, I'm not surprised to find you among them, ma'am. Of course, you've made a name for yourself already, miss. Yes, which means we'll have to work hard and solve this case, too. I have expectations to live up to now. Oh my god. <laughs> what are you laughing? <laughs> what? How? I thought I said it right. Why does PCB sound exactly like the other detective? Because between streams, I forget the voices I do for everybody. So we kind of go from square one. <laughs> Every it's so bad. Oh, I also need to tone it down on going so hard because my throat really hurt last time. Like, really hurt. What was the conclusion of the Big Ben Tower? Because I missed it. It was that the the guy who was in the tower did indeed try to fix it. No, the hand was not behind the other hand. Um, the guy, he tried to fix it. It broke. He dropped it and it broke because apparently that's a thing that happens. So his twin brother runs the bakery next to the detective agency and he specializes in cakes that are replicas of in real life things. So he had his brother make a fucking cake of the clock hand and it melted in the goddamn rain. So you know what they fucking did? They made another cake clock hand and served it to Ambassador Fufufufafa and we're like, here you go. And that was the end of that. And Reese, Reese was right. And Reese, we were wrong. <laughs> so that's what fucking happened, right? Catriel, like the very end, she was like, "Oh, I see. I have all the clothes. All the not all the clothes. All the clues." And oh, what is that? A puddle on the ground? It must have rained last night. That must mean that this guy made a cake of the clock hand and it melted in the rain. And I was like, "Motherfucker." It's so much more complicated than I thought it was going to be. That's why I made the stream title, Made Up Logic, Am I Right? Because that's how Layton works. That's just the first couple games were so good, and the last few games were like, cool, fuck it. That's just, just how they roll. Enter Scotland Yard. Let me just look around a bit. The problem is still... Exactly. Oh, oh, I say there's a puzzle hiding among the folds of that flag. What a highly improbable place for a puzzle. Nerdy Spaceman, hey, how are you? How's it going? Welcome to Layton's Mystery Journey. Well spotted, Ernest. You often, quite often find puzzles where you least expect them. Now then, why don't you have a go at solving this one, Ernest, seeing as it is you who found it? How are you, Nerdy? How's life? How you be living? How you doing? That's pretty much written off this entire game for me. Yeah, it seems like they really are going with the... We're making up our... Wow, I can't do shoutouts. Our logic as we go. 
I'm a little disappointed because I wanted it to be better than this, and it's still pretty early in the game. Do it properly. Dragon Raha, I have no idea what the fuck that is. Oh, thank you for the pride bits. I love it. Thank you. I appreciate it. You're great. Great is great. Let's see. What is Dragon Raha? Uh, fuck that. I'll wait for Kira's Village to get remastered. Yeah, exactly. When that gets remastered, I'll probably get that too because I never had that one. Okay. <clears throat> a shark is on the prowl at a fa- this is what I mean by you're solving mysteries and they're like, here, by solving this cool picture game, you get a clue. Uh, a shark is on the prowl at a popular fishing spot and it's, excuse me, I punched my mic. You only have three pieces of bait to catch all the fish in the area, but you can't afford to throw any bait too close to the shark or it will notice and try to bite. Where should you throw your precious bait? Your bait attracts all fish, including any sharks within a certain range of where you throw it. Of course, you can't throw bait directly on top of fish that might hurt them. Anyway, just pop in to say hi, gotta go to bed. Bye, Reese! Thanks for stopping in! I'm sorry this game is such a... This is, a, this is so far a weird game, because now there's a talking animal, and I'm like, what the fuck, Layton? What the fuck? Thank you, talk to you later. Yeah, Figly Fit is bizarre logic. <clears throat> Nerdy, have you played any Layton games? This is my first one in a while. I kind of gave up after, um... I forget if it was Azran Legacy or the, the Mask one. Marvelous Mask or something. I forget which one. Um, anyway, so I throw bait. And I don't want to attract a shark. Three pieces of bait catch all the fish in the area. You can't afford to throw bait too close to the shark or it will notice and try to bite. Where should you throw your precious bait? Attracts all fish, including within a certain range. Never played a latent game. So latent games are fun. There's a mystery and then you randomly look around and find puzzles like this. And sometimes they give you clues to solve the overall mystery. So it's basically like a mystery story with random brain teaser puzzles thrown in as a way of progressing the game. My problem with them sometimes is that they, um, tend to make up their own logic, which can be a little frustrating. Oh, look at that. I wonder why I can do it partially over here. And not, oh, because it's on top of a fish. Oh, that's cute. Let's try that. Oh, I think I see it. Get ready. Get ready. Get ready. Boom. So, my thing with the latent games is some of the puzzles are way too easy, and some of them are way too difficult and use made-up logic. Like, that was super easy. It looks like it reminds me of Wii and Nintendo games you used to play as a kid. <laughs> These have been out since the early 2000s, and it started on the DS, so it definitely has that vibe. You did it! The shark is envious of all the fish you caught. Think it's thinking of selling some of its teeth to earn enough to buy a fishing rod. Okay, yeah, that's weird. The scales puzzle used its own bizarre logic. It was so weird! I did not like that one. I did it! I did it, miss! I solved it! Ha ha! Well done, Ernest! I'm impressed! Well, it wasn't easy, but it was all worth it just to hear you say that, miss! Hmm. Alright, let's go in. Oh yes, I forgot to mention that we can return to the agency from any point you know. Whenever you'd like to go back, just press X or select the latent detective agency button. I've put details of all the cases on the pin board, so you can switch to investigating another case whenever you decide to do so. Or you can play around with the office Feng Shui if you don't like how it's decorated at the moment. Oh, so that would be a way of going back to the previous cases and finding any coins or solving any puzzles we might have missed. Yes, and for less serious-minded Ernest, redecorating could be a nice change of pace. <laughs> okay. Can I please go in? I played Agent A a couple months ago. It's a really good puzzle game. 
What is it about? Is it paced like this where there's a story with puzzles? Because this is definitely like, when I want to play a puzzle game, I'm not thinking like Outer Wilds or Zelda. Though I love those games. When I think puzzle game, I always think Layton because this was like my first experience with puzzle games was Diabolical Box. Because it, it's instead of solving a puzzle in the moment in real time, it's like I can just stand here and talk and take my time and think. Um, which, which is something I really like about these games. Oh, what is it, miss? Oh, she was like, something is amiss! Don't you think it's unusually quiet around here at police headquarters, considering a murder has just been reported? Yes, I suppose you're right. I don't see many officers rushing about to follow leads or anything. Hmm. Oh, look, there's Dr. Sturt, the reporter from the London Times. Ah, uh, let's go and ask him if he knows anything. If anyone will know, it's a reporter. <laughs> Let's go ask him. In a second. So let's look for hint coins. The other thing about the previous Lightning games that I wasn't crazy about was that they sometimes... The first few games were really hard and you got like no hint coins and then they made the games way easier and gave you too many hint coins. <laughs> this one seems to have a pretty good balance. And you find the hint coins by like poking around and they pop out of stuff. <laughs> It has a story about an agent trying to track down an evil person that's really cool and designed like 50s and 60s art. Ooh, that does sound really good. Hello there! You're on the same train as me, I dare say! You've heard about the incident at Riverside Festival, I presume? A murder no less, what a dark world we live in! So, oh, that's what Reese meant about why does he sound the same as Douglas Dirt. Oh my god, I can't believe I gave the other guy the same voice. My bad. Yes, probably, or maybe not, but it seems likely. Then again, oh, I thought of all people, you'd know at least. Well, the word on the street was it was a murder, but the police haven't made a statement either way. Seems a bit odd, don't you think? A murder at one of London's biggest events should be front page news. Hmm, seems like we're going to just have to get the facts from the horse's mouth. Uh, by all means, Inspector Hastings, he passed through here not long hence. I press I'm going to give him the lowdown, but he'll be give me, but he gave me the cold shoulder. I think he's probably still in his office. Ah, thanks for that. We'll go find him. No need to thank me. All I ask in return is a little addition of any dirt you happen to pick up. Anything at all will do. Oi, oi, oi. The voices on this game really exhaust. Doing voices I love so much. And then at the end of the night when I'm going to bed, I'm like, Jerry, Jerry, I can't. Ooh. Now then, where is the inspector? Oh look, there he is, over there. Gosh, his face is as black as thunder. This must be a terribly troublesome case. He always looks like that. Perhaps he finds every case troublesome. Let's ask. What did I miss? We got into Scotland Yard. And now, um, for some reason, the police station has like nobody running around. And we were like, what the fuck? And then I realized what other Reese meant by um, I, I gave the detective outside the agency the same voice as Douglas Dirt because we just ran into Douglas Dirt and I did the same voice and I was like, oh, I always forget what um, voices I give people. And soon you'd be like, hey, can you fetch me a spot of water, love? <laughs> I'm a voice actor in my spare time. Yeah, just for casual. It freaking exhausts me, though. <laughs> Ooh. The clock is absolutely spot on, isn't it? To the second? Well, sure. Having an accurate timed reference is a vital part of the investigative procedure. Quite right, Ernest. Police and detectives alike always have to make sure they have the correct time. It's the next Terra Strong. Hey, that is a huge compliment. Thank you, nerdy. I'm okay. How is my Catriel voice? Is it okay? I know my accent kind of goes all over the place. But really, if you've watched Breakfast at Tiffany's, she tends to talk like this, don't you think? Because I don't know. Um, what was her name again? Oh my god. Not Eliza Doolittle. I'm thinking about- I, I have all my Audrey Hepburn wires crossed. Truman Capote, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Holly, go lightly. Thank you. 
An old clockmaker needs help setting the time on three clocks. The clocks each say different times. One says 4.05, one says 2.18, and the other says 3.05. One of the clocks is 32 minutes fast, another is 28 minutes slow, and one of them has stopped completely. I'm sorry, what? So one of the clocks is 32 minutes fast. I just realized that your voice for Catriel is the same as the old-fashioned Disney princess voice. Which Disney princess? <laughs> <laughs> uh, not Cinderella. Sleeping Beauty, maybe. Hmm. Cause you were like, do the Grace Kelly transatlantic, but I, I haven't seen my Grace Kelly in a while. Snow White, I hate Snow White. Oh, but I really think that we should blah, blah, blah. I hate Snow White. Snow White's dumb. Um... One says 405, one says 218, and the other says 305. One is 32 minutes fast. Your mug is blocking the puzzle again. Is it blocking the part? Is it blocking the part where it says no backseating? Is it? 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 My mug is great. Thanks for asking. I learned British accents from watching Doctor Who. My friend Carrie and I, and I've said this on stream before, um, but every, started speaking in fake British accents to each other for a while. We got everybody, not everybody to do it, but most people to do it. And we kept it up for like four months during college. It was fucking fun. Okay. Aurora is my least favorite princess, but Snow White is kind of trash too. I didn't get to watch them a ton, but I remember very much just, I didn't own any of them. So it was only at friends' houses. I liked Sleeping Beauty, hated Snow White. <laughs> Um, just cause she seemed dumb. Sorry. Um, oh damn. 405, 218, and one says 305. One is 32 minutes fast, the other is 28 minutes slow, and one has stopped completely. So my impulse, this one's easy, it's worth 40 picker outs. My impulse is to be like, okay, well what does 32 plus 28 equal? 60. So... I think that the one that says 405 is 32 minutes fast. The one that says 305 is 28 minutes slow. So then the one that's what, 218 is going to be the one that's correct. Oh, wait, no, but if. Ow, ow, ow. The thing that was in my eye just moved again. Whoa, Nelly. Five plus thirty-two minutes. Um. Whoa, Nelly. See, now I'm doubting myself. I think Sleeping Beauty in the movies is good, but the princess herself is kind of bad. <laughs> I think Maleficent is a far more interesting character. And then when you like realize that it would have been hugely insulting to not insult to not invite a fairy to a christening, like I'll fucking blame her. I was on the right path. Um so 405 and 305 are an hour apart apart. Um So I think the one that says 218 has stopped. Um Oh my gosh, my eye really hurts. Um, 28 minutes slow. So you only need to figure out one that's correct. Set them all to the correct time. So I don't need to figure out what they're all going to be set to because only one is going to be set. Because they're all... T there's not... Sorry, I'm saying this wrong. There aren't three different instances of set clock. A to the right time, B to the right time, and C to the right time. The right time is as one. You just need the correct time. Yeah. So if 32 minutes fast, 28 minutes, that's an hour difference. I'm saying the one that's 218 is the stopped one. So I'm just going to say that 5, 305, and if that's the slow one, plus 28, 333. Wait, but what's... 3.33, I think. Oh, I kept trying to use my, um... If we're wrong... I'm gonna be so sad. 
See, this is one of those puzzles that I think is trying to trick you by making you try to figure out three different times. This puzzle's got some might. Yeah, buddy! We did it! We did it! Hooray! I thought I had, I was like, I didn't push that button. Oh, I'm sorry, I had something in my eye for like an hour before dinner and it was like making my eye water and now it's like shifting around again. Oh, I don't know what it is. Probably a lash. The old man looks really pleased. Yay! See, you know what I don't like about that puzzle we just had is that it didn't- sometimes they explain the logic to you and sometimes they're like, congrats. Yeah, I had something stuck in my eyes so bad that I did like two eye washes and it wasn't coming out, so I just kind of like gave up and decided I'm just gonna live life uncomfortably and now it's like shifting around in the front and I can see it. Oh, jolly good show, well done. Are you in training to be a police dog by any chance? Oh, sure. It's what I've always dreamed of, pinstripes. Surely shows in training to be a detective's dog, not a police dog. I give up. <laughs> if they have to explain the logic, that's partially the issue sometimes. <laughs> yeah. Ah, oh, you're a cat. Good, I've been waiting for you to show up. See, you got the usual entourage with you. We don't actually allow pets in the yard, but I'll turn a blind eye for now. I heard there was an incident at the Riverside Festival. Yeah, that's right. And the festival's in full swing already. The homemade fancy substitute is pretty good. What the fuck is that? What? Ice, orange juice, and soda. I used to do that all the time when I was a kid. I'm just not a fan of orange sodas in, in, in particular anymore. So it's like Coke, tea, or water for me. You know what I'm saying? Ouch. That hurts. It was actually a not take them all better after long time to watch the show. But now this has happened. People are saying it's a murder. Is that right? Who told you that? Oh, it was me on the blow, wasn't it? But like I said, we don't know for sure. What exactly did happen, Inspector? <laughs> well, I'll tell you what we know so far. Early this morning, a man and a woman fell from opposite banks into the tubs and haven't been seen since. Well, sounds like it was no accident. The man pushed by some was pushed by someone. Then it's clearly a murder. The woman, on the other hand, chucked herself in. Gosh, a murder and a suicide? You're not suggesting the two events are unrelated, but just happened to c occur at the same time? Coincidentally? We haven't managed to ascertain yet whether they're unrelated or not. There's people trolling all over the river as we speak, but we still haven't found either one of them. This is making my head hurt. On the phone before, you said it was probably a murder, but might not be a murder. What did you mean by that? Do you know anything about the victims? According to our investigations, the girl was called Vic, the bloke was called Tim. Last name is not forthcoming. Both of them lived on Chancel Lane, it seems. Well, blow me down with a feather. Everything seems to happen on our street. Apparently, apparently the pair were set to appear as part of the Riverside Dance Show of Devotion tonight. I wonder what's behind all this. It's my job to find out, Sunshine. It seems I was requested personally to- Oh, sorry. Not Inspector Hastings, Catriel. Vitamin C prepares you against colds. But I'm not preparing to have a cold because I'm preparing to be healthy. No, I'm just kidding. Um, you can give your theory. Just don't backseat me on the puzzles in particular. Uh, my theory is that they both... Um, that there's like some weird cult here and that the girl jumped in and there's a secret tunnel and the guy was nervous and got shoved and that they're both alive in a tunnel under the river somehow. Um, that's my theory. <laughs> um, um, I take vitamin C when I think I'm coming down with something, but I also just don't like juice very much. And not only that, but told not to evolve too many officers. On the one hand, I'm flattened, but on the other, I'm flummoxed. There ain't exactly much to go on, and I'm ample by having so few officers at my disposal as well. Which is partly why I asked you to come down here, cat. You couldn't end an end, could you? I see. So that's the situation. So Riverside Market, known to be a romantic place, the two of them decided to elope by faking their deaths. Then was the guy getting cold feet so someone shoved him in? Question mark? Tell me, who is it that I specifically asked for you, Inspector? I'm just on my way to see the person in question now, as it happens, Dagalog. Let's believe I can find it down at Guildhall. 
Guild Hall? You mean the Town Hall on Gresham Street? Yup, that's what. Come on, shake a leg. All right then, lead the way. Gresham Street. Gresham. That's not your theory because a double suicide would raise too much suspicion. Fairs. See, I want to get to the main mystery. Like, I don't know if this will have to do with the overarching plot or not. This is Guildhall, is it? We could almost taste the history here. Yeah. It's bustling, isn't it? Especially considering the late hour. It's the Riverside Festival, that's why. It's keeping everyone busy. So, who is the person that asked you to handle the case then, Inspector? That would be the Mayor of London herself, Mrs. Pippa Lewin Lo Lawanida. Oh, yes, I've seen her picture in the papers. Very sharp looking young woman. They say she's really been shaking things up since she took up office. She sounds like a force to be reckoned with. Oh, she might be. That doesn't help us find her. Where in the rabbit war do you suppose she's hiding? <laughs> Why don't we ask that woman over there? This jogging lady again. Oh, there we go. So we're gonna click around maniacally for hint coins. <laughs> Loanita is immediately sus. Pourquoi? <laughs> oh, hi there. One, two, one, two. How are you doing? London's such a great city. I found so many puzzles while I've been running around, and I do love puzzles. Look, I came across this one just now. Thanks, Professor Layton. For all these random puzzles that you give me, sports matches. The matches are lined up to show the number 3706 by taking a one match. You can spell out the name of a sport. Which one is it? Golf. She's been shaking stuff up since she took up office. Pretty much points arrows at her. I think it's golf. But upside down and backwards. I think. She been shaking up stuff ever since she took over London. Yeah, that's either either it is her or somebody's mad at her. Um Seems like it could be a red herring. Whoa! Um... So let's... Take away... That one. No. I'm getting incredibly tired, so I'm gonna have to go before it hits two. Love you as always. Happy birth week. Bye, Shay. Thank you. <laughs> Bye. Sleep well. I'm gonna be puzzling this puzzle. But none of these. Our letters as they are, except for this one. So take away one match, you can spell out the name of a sport. I don't know, I think it's golf. <laughs> because none of those are letters as is, and I would need to alter each one. Let's just see. This is an interesting one. Ha! <laughs> You turn the whole thing upside down and take one match away from the E and it spells golf. Nice shot. Boom! What the fuck you want, bitch? I'm so fucking smart. Zoom in. Double. There we go. What? 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 Such a genius. 
the game literally lies to you. <laughs> they didn't say it wasn't gonna be upside down and backwards. That's what these games do to you. That was fun, thanks. Oh, you're very welcome. Great exercise for the brain, huh? Hey, wanna come for a run with me as well? Oh, I don't know. I'm not sure I could keep up with all the one twos. I think I'll have to pass, sorry. Thought it was golf, but at the same time it didn't say turn it upside down, but it didn't say not to. Yeah, that's how these games fucking work. That's what happened after like game three, is that they started throwing this shit in. Um, excuse me, would you point us in the direction of Mayor Loanita's office, please? Oh, yes, um, the mayor, yes, she's probably in her chamber. I shouldn't think so, anyway, probably. Uh, it's really make us believe you know what you're talking about. I'm, uh, Miss Loanita's secretary. Er, hesitate, pleased to meet you. Did you need, um, something about the mayor or something? I'm glad I watched this before buying a Professor Layton game. Curious Village and Diabolical Box. The first two are still really good. I can't remember the third. The first ones are good, though. But they're hard. And then they start to, like, pfft, with the logic. <sighs> Excuse me. <laughs> She's, um, extremely busy today, and I'm not sure she'll, uh, have the time to fit in any unscheduled appointments. I didn't realize the mayor had so much to do. Oh, well, um, Miss Loanita's a very dedicated individual. As I'm sure you all know, she's taken it upon herself to, er, uh, totally revolutionize the way the city is, um, well, governed. I don't, I mind just doing stupid shit like that. It frustrates the hell out of you. Yeah, then you're gonna have a hell of a time watching me play this, believe me. At the present, she's um, pushing forward her plans for environmental projects as well as welfare reforms. Golly, she certainly does sound like she keeps herself busy. Yes, and of course now it's um, the festival as well. Is the mayor personally involved in the running of the festival then? Most uh, definitely, Mayor Loanita goes to extreme lengths to uh, mm, ensure the festival's success. Every year she plans a great deal of events for herself and um, she's always uh, on present on site to oversee the setting up and other arrangements. And this year's festival is um, on a larger scale than last year's, so it's uh, been all hands on deck around here. Ha 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 ha. Well, I'm very sorry to be disturbing you at such an obviously busy time. If you could just tell us where the mayor's office is. Of course, it's just inside and up the, um, the, uh, stairs. Good day to you now. The mayor sounds so busy. I wonder if she'll have time to meet with us. Well, it was her who asked the inspector to investigate, so I would think that she'll make the time. But let's go and see. So, the, all that frustration aside... I think they are quite fun, and I really like, like, the silliness of the logic for the puzzles aside. <sighs> Excuse me. The silliness of the stories and just the sweetness of the characters, I really enjoy. Um, I did like the original core better, though, from the first trilogy. Mayla, what are you doing? Oh, are over there. Good, let's go and talk to her then. <clears throat> Gotta collect these hint coins. All right. My hello, Anita. Sorry to bother you when you're so busy. Inspector Icing, CRD. Ah, Inspector. I'm pleased to finally meet you in person. And your colleagues are? Ah, oh, yes. These three, well, these two, and the dog are from Leighton Detective Agency. The Leighton Detective Agency? That's right. I've enlisted their help for this case. Miss Leighton's proven herself extremely capable crime solver. Only the other day, she helped to solve a very difficult case. So you and Jerry gonna come dine in the Great Hall with me when I'm in Oxford? Only if you let me wear a wizard robe and hat and carry a wand. It's a pleasure to meet you, Mayor Loanida. Catria Leighton, at your service. Feel free to call me Cat if you prefer, or Catriel. I really don't mind. And I'm Miss Leighton's assistant, Ernest Greaves. Hello, Ernest, and your dog. Is she also part of the Leighton team? Absolutely. Although she is a he, she performs police dog duties for us. He's indispensable to the work we do. She? She? Woof, woof. 
Well, that's good to hear, because the success or failure of the Riverside Festival really hinges on the resolution of this case. You don't think they'd approve of that? Well, then I ain't coming, bitch. I'm just kidding. That would be so much. So you have to dress fancy for dinner, like a suit? Like, really, really? Really, really? Are you gonna have to go shopping? <gasps> Are you gonna have to go shopping? In fact, I would hope you won't take offense, but I'd just like to see your skills in action by having you solve this little puzzle. <laughs> I have to blow my nose. This one's gonna be hard. I guess the gender binary. Fucking. Boy and a girl are lost in a maze. Guide them each turn along the paths. Switch between controlling the boy or the girl using L and R and move them using directional bu buttons. When they tread on a switch on the ground, any gates matching flowers elsewhere in the maze will open up. <clears throat> oh. Oh. Oh, I thought this was going to be fucking easy. Fuck. Oh, I thought this was gonna be easy. Somewhat fancy, but unless you're at high table or special dinner, I don't think you have to wear gowns. Jerry and I have been thinking about where we're gonna moon. I'm wondering if we want to moon in Scotland. Because that sounds really dope. Or France. I don't know what we're doing. Hang on. Huh. Hang on. Hang on, let's try this instead. I'm not sure if having it lead with the boy is the right thing to do. You can do it. This is one of those ones that might just be... Difficult without. I think the fact that there are two reds is definitely it hinting at the fact that you need to do red shit. Yeah! I figured it out. Wait, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I got it, I got it, I got it. Here we go. The yellow is just a fucking red herring. Wait, what did I just do? I keep forgetting to switch back. Yay, they're gonna kiss now. The yellow was just a red herring. <laughs> Phew. Well, that's very impressive, I must say. Your puzzle-solving skills are abundantly clear. I feel confident that I can trust the Riverside Festival case to you now. Oh yes, Miss Loanita, you can count on us. There are a number of troubling points about this case, most notably the stark resemblance to the Legend of the Thames. I'm not aware of the Legend of the Thames, I'm afraid. I seem to recall hearing something like that before, but I forget the details. 
Allow me to explain. The tale goes like this. Long ago, a young man and a woman, each from a distinguished London household, fell in love with one another. Another lack of pupils, Miss Lonely. <laughs> Their eyes are always weird. Look at Catriels are like reverse pupils, and then Ernest has tiny pinpricks, like he's on meth or something. <laughs> fell in love with one another. However, the two families were enemies, so the couple's love was forbidden. Ha! Huh, an old English legend, you say? <laughs> they were forced to arrange a clandestine meeting every night, each coming to as close to the other as they could, on opposite banks of the river. The woman's father learned of their activities and arranged for one stormy night for her lover to be pushed into the river. What a stinker! The current was too strong for the man, and he was swept away to his death. Witnessing her lover's tragic end, the woman was heartbroken and threw herself into the river as well, ending her own life. I see. It's said that the couple's bodies were found days later, locked in an embrace. From then on, the ghosts of the couple were believed to draw young lovers to the river on clear starlit nights as they lamented their tragic fate. So, to appease the uneasy souls of the departed lovers, a festival was established. And that's the origin of the Riverside Festival, I presume? That's right. It's a terribly sad story, but in the end, the couple were united in love, which is what led to the belief that gazing at your loved one across the Thames will bless your relationship with good luck. Ah, uh, yes, that's the idea behind the Riverside Show of Devotion, which is happening tonight, of course. But what an extraordinary similar between the similarity between the legend and the case we're currently investigating. Yes, it's either an incredible coincidence or some contrived to mimic some blah, 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 blah. someone contrived to mimic the legend on purpose. Hmm, interesting. It's a terrible shame that such a dreadful crime has sullied the festival. So many Londoners have been looking forward to it. We must get to the bottom of it at once so that the pupils, people's minds can be put at rest. <laughs> I was told you had for me to lead this investigation using a very small team of officers, officers Miss Lowenheider. I don't understand why you want the old force working on it if it's important to get it resolved quickly. Yes, the problem is, a great many members of the public are present at the scene because of the festival. If we send in swaths of officers, we'll utterly destroy the atmosphere. After all, we're not even sure if it is a murder, an accident, or a suicide that we're dealing with. I should like to avoid alarming the public by keeping the investigation as low-key as possible. Mm, I see. Still. Inspector Hastings, everyone tells me what a talented officer you are. They do? Yes. I hear you're dedicated and passionate about your work. One of the most admired detectives in the yard, I believe. Which is why I know I can rely on you to carry out this investigation swiftly and discreetly. Well, I, um, I don't know what to say. After such high praise, I can hardly turn you down now, can I? Thank you, Inspector, and I'm grateful to you too, Miss Layton, and your assistant. Now, I'm afraid I'm rather busy. After the show of devotion tonight, the mayor always makes a speech. So this is so sus. So sus. <laughs> Thank you. The festival is very close to my heart, so I do hope you get results soon. You just leave it to me, Mrs. Lowenida. <laughs> One of the most admired detectives at Scotland Yard. He is certainly dedicated and passionate about his job, but that's something of an overstatement, isn't it? Just a bit. Shh, he'll hear you, Miss Layton. Alright. Oop. Dust. Dust. Hmm. Head to the Thames. Buy bicycle. I don't get this movement of, like, bicycle. Oh, it's you. Ooh, why is this voice acted? Hmm? You're that so-called detective who thinks you solve cases with gut feelings and instinct, aren't you? Ooh. Do I know you? I'm Emiliana, Emiliana Perfetti, forensic analyst and profiling expert. Unlike some Our rival. I my deductions on hard evidence, facts and figures. Well, 
that all sounds very impressive. Yeah, impressively stuck up. Anyway, I'm investigating this case. To be perfectly honest, your involvement is a headache I could do without. You should just leave it to the professionals. Well, as hmm. long as the case is solved in the end, does it matter if it's facts or fortuity that get you there? There's no doubt in my mind that I'll solve this mystery. Oh? So, if you'll excuse me, I have work to do. <laughs> if you call rolling dice and drawing tarot cards work. <laughs> Catherine Layton, just because you're Professor Layton's daughter, va bene. We'll see how far your methods get you. She's yeah, I can't. It's like generic. It's like a mishmash of European. Who is that woman, Inspector Hastings? <laughs> She's a profiler. She's pretty well respected down at the yard. Emiliana Perfetti is her name. We call her Perfect Perfetti. A profiler? You mean someone who analyzes criminals and their motives? <laughs> Something like that. Profile is all about evaluating the physical evidence of reconstructing crime scenes and the like. perfect has got a real knack for figuring out details about criminals by gathering a ton of information from the crime scenes and analyzing everything she finds. She had cracked a number of cases that event everyone else at the yard stopped. It sounds like she's a very talented lady. Yeah, and if we don't pull our claws out, she's gonna steal our thunder. Solve this case before we do. Woof. You're right, Shell. And while we're building our reputation, we could really do with solving high-profile cases like this ourselves. I think she's Italian. It's like Italian-ish, but it had a little bit of this... I don't know. Well, I'm gonna head back to the yard and see how investigations progress and what about you? I think we'll start by heading to the river where the incidents took place. All right, well, thanks, Cat. This isn't just about pleasing the mayor, of course. It's about allowing Londoners to enjoy the festival. I hear you loud and clear, Inspector. So we'll be running along. Let's get the bump out of here. I meant to say that because her name seems that way. Vabene also sounds Italian. I mean, it definitely does, but there was more about her accent that just didn't... <laughs> I don't know, it was weird. <laughs> this game takes a lot of liberty with that shit. So, this is where the festivities take place, is it? There's more going on than I expected, actually. Oh, look! Ice cream! Loretta! Yes, all right, Shell. I was only joking. The investigation comes first. I know, I know. Oh, freshly baked muffins! Mmm, just smell that. Joke, were you? Really? You wouldn't know anything that happened, would you? Everyone seems to be having a jolly good time. But if our reporter friend Douglas Dirt is to be believed, the public are well aware of the incidents. Perhaps we should talk to a few members of the public while we're here and see if we can learn anything new. Let's do for children's. Oh wow! Oh wow! This is the Riverside Festival? I can't believe it! It is the best! I know! Isn't it just the best? I suppose it is the most famous festival in London, mind you! I heard it was really boring though, but look at all these people here! Coming here was the best idea, Benji! I really wanted us to uh, take part in the uh, show of devotion tonight, but apparently you have to apply in advance! Oh no, really? But I wanted everyone to see how in love we are! Okay, boring. Sean Buchan. Ah, uh, have you heard the rumors about what happened this morning? They say some fiend was shoved into the river and then at last chucked herself on the other bank. Tis just like the legend of the Thames. So it is. I used to sing sea shanties about it when I was a lad. Now I'm here, I've just found out about something called the Riverside Show of Devotion going off this evening. It's sad uh, about the missing couple and everything, but I still want- I don't know what to do with this guy. <laughs> it feels like the rather tragic incidents have actually attracted more people down here. Yes, there was always something of a low-key affair before the Riverside Festival. I think perhaps not very many people are ever really aware of it. So it seems that since people got wind of the incidents, they decided to come down here and see what the festival was all about. That's poor taste, that is. Well, it's the way of the world, Shell. It's only when things make the headlines for whatever reason that makes people realize what they're missing. 
Much like how all these people are in the presence of a great detective at this very moment, and they have no idea. I'm sure your name will be in the paper soon, Miss Layton. Don't you worry. Yes, hopefully. Anyway, we still haven't found out anything about... <laughs> <laughs> I'm like losing my track with the voices. I'm getting tired. More about the incidents, have we? No, there are so many people here for the festival, but no one seems to actually have seen what happened. Well, let's not forget that the incidents took place on both banks of the river. We should go and investigate the other side as well. Come along, you two. Coming, miss. Bark and woof. Woof and bark. Bark and woof and woof and bark. I still want to... Nope. See if there are any hint coins. Oh, there we go. Okay. Let's cross. So this is where the missing woman threw herself into the river then. It's dead quiet on this bank, compared to the other side where the festival's happening. Oof. Yes, but there are still plenty of passers-by. Someone may have seen something. <laughs> but how will we ever find them? Well, well, we certainly won't find out anything unless we start asking people some questions. <laughs> That's it, pierce my eardrums, why don't you? <laughs> Is that the puzzle he's pulling? Ooh, I wonder what sort of puzzle a cat would be playing with. Yeah, a cat with a puzzle. Never seen that before. Oof. All right, pinstripes, I'll show you how it's done. <laughs> Have you been ha hardcore out of listening to the Outer Wilds soundtrack like me? No, that's Shay. <laughs> Hang on a second. I've mostly been listening to Avatar Lo-Fi when I work. Okay. After five friends arrive at an arranged meeting place, they each describe what they could see ahead of them on the way. Here's what they all say. I could see C because we were walking together. I could see a few people ahead of me. D was walking in front of A. D didn't see anyone, and B was walking behind C. No one overtook anyone else on the way, so who arrived last? I love these kind of puzzles. Hang on. I need this. Oh, wait. D didn't see anyone, so I want to say D was first. D was walking in front of A. I could see C because we were walking together. So D was walking in front of A. Don't reshush. I'm solving this slowly. Yeah. Okay. D didn't see anyone. I could see C because we were walking together. C says D was walking in front of A, so they were definitely together. <laughs> yes, shush. Um, also, you know the, the potion mystery in the end of Harry Potter when they're going to get the Sorcerer's Stone and they have to drink a potion to progress through the flame? And there's like a riddle and Hermione is like, most wizards can't solve riddles, but I can because I'm smart. Every time I read the first Harry Potter, I have to like sit down and, and like map out the potion bottles. I love this kind of puzzle. I could see C because we were walking together. D was in front of A. I could see a few people ahead of me. <laughs> B was walking behind C. Wait, so the fact that E could see anyone at all, but no one saw E. It was E who arrived last. E. You're just a ball of stress. 
Hey, yo! See, last time I was getting so irritated because all y'all were like, Ooh, this puzzle, ooh! And I'm like, bruh, you want to try streaming and solving puzzles? It's hard. <laughs> God, those Kyle's emotes look so fucking good. I love the Celia love. There, done it! Ha ha! Ruff! Wonder where this monkey got the puzzle from in the first place. Wow! <laughs> Hint coin. Good evening, sir. What have you caught? Anything? Ah, oh, fellow night fisherman, are you? What have I caught, you ask? Let me see. Uh, fish. Yes, I've caught fish. Oh, dearie me. I'm not sure we're going to have much luck with this chap. Um, we're investigating the incident that occurred here earlier today. Do you know anything about it? <laughs> Incident? What incident? Oh, yes, you mean that incident. So you know about it? The woman who fell into the river? Know about it? I saw it. Saw it with my own eyes. Bingo! An eyewitness straight off the bat. That is fishy. Could you tell us what you saw, please? Hmm? What? Who saw me? Um, yes, you just said you saw what took place with your own eyes. Oh, yes, of course. The place! Yes, I saw them all right. Although it's unusual to see place here, so they might have been so... No, no, not fish. We're asking about the woman who fell into the river. A woman, you say? In the river? Do you know? I think I might have seen something like that. Or did I? Make up your mind, old man. Woof. Holy mackerel. Oh, dog made me jump with that odd-sounding bark. But actually, it made me remember something. Really? It was this morning, early. The sun wasn't quite up yet. I was here, fishing, as usual. Anyway, nothing was biting. I was just gazing over at the opposite bank, absent-mindedly, when it happened. Could make out a fellow standing there, and then another pe figure appeared behind him and shoved him in. What happened to the man who fell in? Well, I didn't see him thrashing about or anything. He just vanished. I don't know if he went under straight away, or if he was washed downstream or what. Then whoever did it just ran off, without a second glance. It's a murder then, no doubt about it. There's more to this case though, Ernest. Carry on please, sir. What else can you tell us? Well, before I even had time to be surprised, a woman on this side of the river threw herself in as well. Are you certain about that? She definitely threw herself in? Dead certain. Got memory, like a I mean, I've got a great memory, me. Says who? Woof. She was a young woman. She was standing not far from me, just looking into the water with a sad look in her eyes. But I never expected her to jump in. And it was the same with her. She just disappeared straight away. Once she hit the water, I never saw water. Water? Like an American. Water? I never saw her again. Someone must have called old Bill because they were not long after they were here not long after. I don't think they found her though. Hmm. So the woman really did throw herself in. It was a suicide then. And did you get a look at whoever it was who pushed the man on the other bank, sir? Oh, I saw them all right, yes. But I couldn't really tell you what they looked like. The river's wide here, see? It's a fair old distance to make out any distinguishing features or such like. So, you couldn't see the culprit's face. Sorry, not at all. I couldn't even guess at the person's height, let alone describe their face. I see. Well, you've still given us a very valuable statement, sir. Thank you. You've been a real help. You help? Why, have you spotted some? Don't worry, I'll grab the bait. We'll hook them together. Um, no, no, it's all right. Thank you for your time. Goodbye now. I'm bad at letting things drop, although that's probably the right thing to do in this case. Yes, just drop it. Just breathe. Sleep on it. If you've been working 16 hours, you need to just... Because at some point, some things just need time to breathe. Hmm, the opposite bank is too far away for our fisherman friend to have made out the face of the person responsible for pushing the victim into the river. Aha, uh -huh, I've had an idea. Ernest, could you sprint over to the other side of the river now? 
Just sprint over him? Ruff, that's the best part of a mile. He's not your dog's body, cat. Oh, I don't mind. Eh? Uh, you don't mind? Of course not. I'd be delighted to do it. Delighted to? Are you barking? Ruff, now what are you grinning like that for? Have you forgotten the legend? When you gaze at each other from the opposite banks of the towns, your love will? I mean, never mind. I mean, I'll be on my way. As quickly as you can, please, Ernest. Now that is a bad case of puppy love. I farted a little bit. Shh. Ha, ha, ha. Whew, that was a long way. Now then, Miss Layton should be just over. Yes, there she is. Yoo-hoo, Miss Layton! Hmm, the other bank certainly is a long way off. I can't make out Ernest's face from here. The old fisherman was right, it seems. Aren't you going to wave back? That little Turk's gonna wave his arm off in a minute. It looks like the witness statements aren't going to help us identify the culprit. We'll have to find other avenues. You're not hearing me at all, are you, poor pup? Throw him a bone, cat! Hmm. Two people killed in exactly the same way as the legend. Coincidence? There's no such thing as coincidence. That was an odd cutscene bit. Ha! Ha! I'm back! Ha! I, huh, was waving and waving? Did you, did you see me, miss? Hmm? No. You did it? Well, I was deep in thought, Ernest. Poor Ernest, yeah, for real. This is some, like, stereotypical friend zone, and it feels slightly toxic, I'm not gonna lie. I'm not gonna lie, I'm not too happy about it. Oh, I, I see. Oh, gosh, that sprint must be catching up with me. I feel... Shattered all of a sudden. Don't be disheartened, pinstripes. The road to true love is never easy, they say. Ernest, there's no time to catch your breath, I'm afraid. We have to find out more about the victims. Both the man who was pushed and the woman who threw herself in were residents of Chancellor Lane, according to what Inspector Hastings told us. So let's head back there and see if we can find out anything that may be useful. Ha, huh? oh, okay. Okay. Hmm. Yeah, my mouth is definitely tired of doing the voices at this point. I am feeling it. Head back to Chancellor Lane by bicycle. I'm not- I'm not liking the- the map maneuvering too much. <laughs> it's rather a funny coincidence that both the man and the woman lived here on Chancellor Lane. You could say that they were our neighbors, but I don't ever recall having seen either of them before. Well, it's not like we've been on Chancellor Lane for long, is it? I'm sure we wouldn't recognize the majority of our neighbors. Anyway, let's see if anyone else on the street has some information for us. <laughs> My voice is tired. Yeah, whenever you get a lane game, you always want to click around like a maniac for a bit first. <laughs> Good evening, ma'am. I wonder if you might spare us a minute to answer some questions? Um, yes, what about? Have you heard about the couple who live here in Chancellor Lane that went missing this morning after falling in the Thames? Vic and Tim, you mean? Yes, I heard. It's so awful. Do you, do you know them personally? Oh, yes. They're very well known around here. They're both performers, you see. They love the limelight, those two, like this. Ah. Maybe the mayor hired people to jump into the Thames to draw mystery and intrigue and get crowds so she could be seen as a hella cool mayor because that's the obvious one the obvious one last time though was that the clock hand was stuck behind the clock hand but it really turned out to be made of cake so who fucking knows who even fucking knows 
There's a silhouette of someone standing on a pitch black stage. They're waiting for the lights to come on so they can dazzle the audience. Can you light up the whole stage using only four spotlights? The lights change direction if they hit a mirror. Select a light to switch on or off and illuminate every single square. Oh, this is fun. Ooh. Beep boop. <gasps> Many lemons! How are you? How are your lemons faring? <clears throat> How's it poppin'? This is... an interesting puzzle. How's it going? How it's going? Is it? I'm doing lots of voices for Professor Layton Games! Guess who got a fit? Did you? Did you just get affiliate? Oh my god, really? It's like I want to shout you out, but now that I have it set as many lemons, I can't. So I need to like look it up, nerd ML. Nice! Congratulations! Oh my god. How are you streaming? What were you playing? Have you filled it all? Why is it not doing it? There we go, Firewatch. That is a game I've been meaning to play and I've never gotten around to it. When did you do it? Was it today? Was it just now? Have you filled out all the paperwork yet? I highly suggest making a separate PayPal account just because it'll just make your life easier. I use my regular PayPal a lot and whereas it was like, you kind of sometimes want to hold money from Twitch for like 30 days in case people do chargebacks. That's my personal preference. Anyway, enjoy. Congrats. You did it. Oh, yeah, we did it. We did it. I have like we no energy. <laughs> I'm so tired. Congrats though. Oh my God. You just got the email. Ah! That is très magnificent. Very, very. How's Leighton treating you? How it's treating me is that... The, so, I can't remember if you've been here during my tirades. Um, I didn't play Curious Village, but I came in at Diabolical Box, and that seemed like it had a lot of hard puzzles and not enough hint coins. And then as they made more and more games, and I think, I can't remember if I stopped playing Marvel, if it was Marvelous Mask or Azran's Legacy. I know I finished one and got halfway through the other, and it was whichever one was the newer one is the one I didn't finish. I got frustrated because a lot of the puzzles seemed too easy. There were hint coins coming out of my ears. And a lot of them have made up logic almost. And this one seems to have taken some of that feedback, but it hasn't fixed up that made up logic problem. So the the hint coins aren't as many, which is good. There's like one per place. That's a good balance. There are some puzzles that are really good and some that seem really hard. But then there was one where it was like, here are some toothpicks laid out. If you take out one toothpick, it spells the name of the sport. Which toothpick do you take out? And the answer was golf, but the answer was you take out this toothpick and then you turn it upside down and mirror image and then it spells golf. And Reese was in here earlier was like, that's so fucking stupid. They didn't tell you you need to turn it around and flip it and reverse it and I was like but they didn't tell you not to and it's just like I'm a little disappointed to see that kind of logic come back yeah so it was toothpicks were laid out in a pattern and by taking one out the remaining toothpicks would spell a word I saw it was golf by I held up my mirror and I was like I feel like none of these are letters but it kind of looks like golf backwards so I held up my mirror and if I covered that one toothpick it was golf so yeah but I like Professor Layton games. It's just, it makes me disappointed to see that they're still using some of that kind of logic. Oh my god, the other side. I didn't even fucking realize. <gasps> I didn't realize. Put your thing down, flip it, and reverse it. I've cosplayed him. Oh my god, many lemons. There is someone. I don't know if they're in the Boston area or what, but they are. They go to Anime Boston every year, 
as sexy Layton. Like I'm talking top hat, just like white sleeve cuffs, um, brown pants, and he is fucking shredded and he just is shirtless. And he'll start in like the first, um, the whole Layton suit. And then day two, he'll like take unbutton the shirt a little bit. And then day three, he's like fully shirtless and Layton booty shorts, but he's so ripped. And he has someone dressed up as Luke, like his girlfriend or something, and she does the same thing where she's like dressed in like the full Luke suit. And then by the end, it's like a bra and booty shorts. But they're like so good and they're so legendary. And I'm so bummed that I didn't get to see them this year at Anime Boston. So bummed. Um. Hmm. Wait, those are already hit. Wait, I have to illuminate every square? <laughs> every single square. Gotcha. This game is not very easy for me. This is gonna be lots of just... we go clicking around until I do it Thank goodness I got that right. you cosplayed him I love professor late we have the rebel tech figure of professor Lane it's very cute <laughs> I've always liked these games I also have the um the professor Layton and the eternal Dino diva movie on DVD I should watch that on my birthday <laughs> well done you solved it you're very good aren't you my friend Pat got it for me, um, like, I don't know, five Christmases ago? It's really cute, and it uses the same exact animation style as the cutscenes in the lane games. There's an amazing meme image of it where they're giving him, like, a shotgun. I haven't watched it in a while, but yeah, I remember something vaguely like that. Probably 22, kill everything. Oh, you mean the Revel Tech? I was gonna say, I know there's a meme of Layton and something, but I can't remember if it's the movie or the toy. Yeah, the Layton Revel Tech is really good. And he comes with like a little tea set and everything, but the Revel Tech joints are really good because they're like ratchets, so he's very posable. <laughs> yes, Vic and Tim are both star performers in musical theater. They're both, they're both actors, you mean? <laughs> Yes, very talented singers and dancers. They have an imitable stage presence and natural performers pose that only natural performers possess. It's a terrible blow for the West End, this. There's a suggestion that Tim was pushed. Do you think it's possible that someone bore him a grudge? Tim? I can't imagine so. He's such a mild-mannered fellow, and I saw Vic just yesterday. She didn't seem any different not to normal. I can't believe she would have thrown herself into the river. Really? You saw her yesterday? That's right. At Lipsky's Patisserie, Vic absolutely adores the cakes there. I, I can't bear it when I think of Vic's face lighting up at the prospect of one of Alex's cakes. I have to believe they're both alright. They'll be found, surely. They'll just pop again up somewhere, won't they? Let's hope so. Well, thank you for your time, ma'am. Oh, you're welcome. I'll just keep on praying for a miracle. <coughs> Hmm, would someone who was so excited about a cake only a day earlier really have thrown themselves into a river the following day? It could have been a final farewell trip to herself. Of course it couldn't. No matter how depressed you were, a delicious cake always would put you in a brighter frame of mind. Not everyone thinks like you, Cat. Thank goodness. Well, at least we've ascertained that Vic paid for a visit to Lipsky's yesterday. Perhaps Alex might know something useful. Yes, you're right, Ernest. We should go there at once and see what we can glean. If he still has some of that cake he sold Vic yesterday, we'll obviously have to sample it. Oh, did I know you were going to say that, Ruff? <coughs> hmm. I like the way Catriel thinks. Both Vic and Tim's are musical theater performers in the same group. Neither of them have any particular problems or troubles. 
yeah, the figure. It's good. It's old, though. I've heard that that one in particular resells for a lot. Ciao bella, signorina. We're waiting exceptionally for you to visit us again. I'm sure Miss Leitchen doesn't appreciate your over-familiar tone. <laughs> How kind of you, and good evening. Actually, I was hoping to ask you a few questions. Have you heard about the couple who went missing in the Thames this morning? Of course, Vic and them are both regular customers of ours. I see. They come here together on dates, you mean? No, they always come with friends. I don't think I've ever seen them here before on their own as a couple. Really? Hmm. Well, thank you for your time. <laughs> You aren't dining today with us, Signorina? Such a shame, but don't be a stranger. Ciao, ciao. <laughs> Alright. To Mr. Lipsky's patisserie. Horn, horn, baguette, baguette. Here we go. Nope. Move. There we go. Un momento, por favor, Signorina. <laughs> oh, hello again. What can I do for my favorite waiter? I have a small problem I was hoping you could help me with. You see, recently we've started offering a diner special. A deal meal service at the restaurant. They tell us what they would like and we create the perfect assortment of dishes for them, but it isn't going so well. Hmm. Dare I, dare we inquire as to why? Well, our chef is a world-class cook, but he isn't so good at understanding what the customers want. But with your powers of deduction, Signorina, we could devise the perfect menu for any of our diners. After all, you are a detective. It is your business to work out things, people. No? I don't know what they're... He, they're giving him Italian, and they're giving him French, and I'm getting confused. I see. Sounds fascinating. Oh, Miss Layton, you're so good to everyone. Too good, really? Jump in head first, why don't you get... Off? <laughs> <clears throat> Ideal meal mini game. See if you can put together the perfect combination of dishes to match each diner's pick. Are you up to the challenge? Can I find it? Okay, so it's just another Layton mini game. You know, I haven't done a single thing with any of Cat's bag. Um, so let's look at this for a little bit. Let's see. Legend of the Thames, case one, missing clock hand. And was stolen, metal theft in capital, all right. So we can at least, yeah, so this tells you what happened with the the mystery. The first mystery was a clock hand went missing on Big Ben, and it turns out it wasn't just stuck or stolen, it was made of cake and melted in the rain, which was dumb. But now I can very quickly just clear out my notifications. Daily puzzles, I'm sure not doing that. <laughs> I don't want to use more brain than I have to. What's a case coda? Short stories, types, and loose ends that were dangling in the main story. Silver is constantly disappearing. Could it be related to the metal thefts? Watch the coda. Chabella. Wait, so is this just that same... See, that's correct. Why do you ask? Oh, did you manage to discover why it's disappearing? It was a simple misunderstanding. Huh? Okay, so if they have, like... Any plot points that they leave hanging, you can go back in here... And it will tell you. So one of the red herrings they gave us in the clock... Um, mystery was that Silver Road was being stolen, so they were trying to get you to think that maybe the hand was stolen and sold for metal scrap. Um. Ooh! Okay, so platter was broken. Okay, this is really dumb. I wish I hadn't opened it. He was right! It's not very interesting! <laughs> um... Nope, we're not watching that. Wardrobe. Ooh. Right, I've got fashion farthings. New. <gasps> oh my god, that is such a cute outfit. Usual attire. Coatless. Not a bad look, I think. I love that. Let's see what I've got here. Um, I have got 13 farthings. That's cute. Ooh, that's not quite my thing. 
I love that, but I think that's like for later, for when she's like trying to. So it's called the Millionaire's Conspiracy. So she's gonna need to dress fancy at some point. Hmm. So I'll need to make sure that I save some farthings for making her look so snazzy. Oh, look at the little outfit for him. <gasps> Ooh, I could put her in a Layton outfit. Oh my gosh, yay. Luke look alike, Emmy impersonation. Oh my gosh. <gasps> look at the Cheryl outfits. I do kind of like that one. I don't know. Honestly, I like, um... I like that one really quite a lot. <laughs> Let's see. Clock, jam, preserve. Clear these things out. Okay, cool. Let's see what the mini game is. Ideal meal in this game, you must come up with the ideal meal to satisfy. You must magic up the perfect melange of dishes to serve hors d'oeuvres, soups, and a sweet course. For each course, select the dish you think would best suit the diner in question. You can interview friends and colleagues and diners to gain insights. Once you pick something for all the courses, select serve or press plus to see how it really is. Uh, abject failure, something edible, or an ideal meal. Aim high. If you're unsuccessful, take note of what your diner says. It could be a hint. When you solve certain puzzles in the game, you require new recipes to include in your menus. Okay, so this seems like something I may not be into. What sort of meal are you looking for? No, yes, I want beautiful food. Everything prepared down to the last detail. Dishes must inspire my making mind. Leave it to me, Alex. I'll decide a menu that will blow your socks off. Um... Simulate creative juices. Brad selects food on a plate that is looking beautiful. He cares about the appearance of a dish. When I think about it, Alex never or spice your strong flavor food. He says he doesn't want to dull his sensitive taste buds. Alright, so let's... Pretty on a dish. That's pretty. Asparagus vichyssoise. Chinese mitten crab soup. That's probably too, like, flavorful. Hot potage, period pumpkin, and yogurt. That seems pretty bland and pretty. Divine, hold sea bream sashimi. Burger surprise, succulent egg. White fish and coconut curry. I honestly don't get this. Cool fish jelly with vibrant fish-shaped jelly pieces. I'm gonna say this. I hope I haven't kept you waiting too long. Here it is, your ideal meal. I am licking lips in anticipation, Miss Layton. Cook. No, yes, dishes containing meat do not give the same sex pleasure as dishes without, in my opinion. Hmm, I see. All right, let me have a think for a while. Of course. What? Not with meat. Maybe that? I hope I haven't kept you waiting too long. Here it is, your ideal meal. So far, this is many calories and desserts. I am looking after figure. Okay. This is not a fun mini game. I do want to finish this. But... I am not really liking this. She swas. It's gotta be that. <clears throat> Ideal meal. Did she say like presentation skill of a chef? Let me have a think. What do you mean? You want low calorie, you want things that look pretty on a plate. Ugh. Maybe that? 
Could be the Vichyssoise. It's definitely the whole broom sashimi. Um, but there's... It might be this. If it goes right from off course to ideal meal, I'm gonna be mad. Containing meat do not give same exploit as dishes without. <clears throat> what? Are you fucking kidding? Oh, it's the prosciutto salad thing. Maybe it's this. This is getting really aggravating. This is not a fun mini game. I do not recommend this mini game. Oh, this is excellent, Mia. You have given me idea for things like a quirky in the pity city. Thank you, clever woman. Ha! Huh. I'm glad you enjoyed it, Alex. Super. Yeah, no, this is not a fun mini game. This is not a fun mini game. All right, that was a waste of time. Waste of time. <clears throat> Mm, that smell. And look, these biscuits are fresh out of the oven. She's like a little puppy when she comes in here. Ruff. I adore it when she becomes so excitable. We're never going to get anywhere with this pair, Ruff. Oh, Alex's brother Hans is here too. Perfect. We can ask both of them if they have any information. Cakes and cookies and cookies and cakes. Cakes. And cookies and cookies and cakes, cakes and cookies, cookies and cakes. Hello, detective. Welcome. You come to buy some of my wonderful cakes. I cannot remember the voice I gave him last time. Yes. No. Rough. Oh, um, no. Actually, we're investigating a case, and I was wondering if you might have some information that could be relevant. This is a reference to Vic and Tim, by any chance. So you know them, Mr. Lipsky? No, yes, no, they live near here. I know their faces and they come in often to buy my cakes. Vic is in love with my profiteroles, and I can't believe they are both missing. Thames is a dangerous river. Vic's family is shocked by news, I think. Oh, do you know her family as well? No, yes, in fact, I just took order from them for profiteroles. Really? They're ordering cakes when their daughter is missing? I thought it was strange, but they made order, so I delivered. And how did they see when he made the delivery? They didn't say nothing to me. They just took the profiteroles and closed the door. Hmm. Very intriguing. Well, you'd better order my favorite food for my memorial service. Good evening, Hans. Ah, Paddy Layton. Again, I'm sorry about Big Ben. I learned my lesson. This is about something else, actually. The couple who went missing in the Thames this morning... Vic and Tim, I heard they are washed away in river. Are they friends of yours? No, yes, I made some props for the theater production sometimes. You do that as well? I say, you are a man of many talents, aren't you, Mr. Lipsky? Do you maybe know something that might help us with our investigation? Perhaps they had some problem that you know about? Or they were worried about something? Sorry, yes, no, they never said like, things like that to me. I do not even know they were a couple. But they were... Well, if they were planning to take part in the show of devotion tonight, then yes. Show is only for couples, but I did not know they were going out. Really? They never told this to me or anyone else in the theater group. Maybe it was a secret? Well, if it was a secret, taking part in the show of devotion would have somewhat blown their cover. No, yes, that is why I'm surprised. So they are definitely not dating, and I think it's definitely staged. Probably by the mayor. Or maybe by the Italian detective who wants to solve a case to make herself look good for the mayor? Who fucking knows? The Lipsky brothers gave us some rather juicy information there, didn't they? Not half as juicy as those macaroons look on that shelf over there. Not now, Ruff. Fine, all right then. Let's see if there's anyone else on Chance Lane who might have some information for us. Perhaps we could head back towards the office. Someone around there might know something. Do, 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 
the other thing is that I feel like in the other lane games, or maybe it was just the earlier ones, I felt like I could move around more at will. And maybe it's just because I'm still at the very beginning of this game, but it's really telling me where to go and not giving me much choice in the matter. Like free roaming doesn't really seem like it's an option here. So that's a bit of a bummer. Aha! Uh -huh. What is it, cat? Have you cracked it? That boutique store is open now. Oh, not this again, Ruff. Yes, it was closed the other day, wasn't it? The old lady said something about the owner only opening up when she feels like it. Let's go in and see what. I'm very curious about this place, especially as it was shut the other day. That's right. Shopping is just what we need to solve the case, Ruff. Don't be ridiculous, Sherl, but we may find out some valuable information. Well, I suppose you never know where your locked lead might come from. Good dog. Right, let's go in then. <laughs> Scoop up your shopping. Alright. I don't like that guy very much. Hang on a second. Um, let me see. I did get that impression from the daughter games. Mm. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Um, so Jerry has a theory. Have you seen Detective Pikachu, Bunny Lemons? I'm not gonna say the theory unless you've seen Detective Pikachu. And in which case, if you've seen Detective Pikachu, you can probably guess where this theory is going. <laughs> oh, it's you, Sleuths, again. I'm just weighing up whether I should go to the Riverside Festival or not. Oh, we were just there, and it was a lark. There are oodles of people gathering for this evening's show of devotion. It does sound interesting, but all that sentiment is too mushy for me. Open bracket. I don't want to turn up at the show of devotion on my own, close bracket. You have not, then I will not spoil it for you. But if you, was it one of the first things introduced in the beginning of this game was that Sheryl has no memory, the dog, and he wants to figure out who he is. And then something similar happens in Detective Pikachu with why the Pikachu can talk. And that's all I'm going to say, but it's a good movie. I really like it. Detective Pikachu was a wild time and it knew exactly what it was, which was a live action Pokemon movie and it didn't take itself too seriously. <laughs> it's good. Okay. Oh, see. Yes, I understand. Ah, you want to buy my Popo If you don't like this Popo I have other Popo Nyo's. Plenty Popo Nyo's for you. Ah, thank you, but no thank you. You don't want my Popo Nyo? Okay, how about a puzzle? Yeah. I already forget what I said about the daughter games that you um agreed with. I already forget what I said. I'm getting a headache. Streamer brain is real. Like, I have not met a streamer yet who doesn't immediately forget what they're saying half the time. <laughs> okay. Roll up, roll up, take your chance at a game of Hoopla. But this is Hoopla with a twist. So not only do you have to get the hoops to land over the pins, but you also have to throw a different number of hoops. Oh, some work on it. Really? So cool. Throw the pins according to what color and shape they are. Four rings to place. One ring around each circular blue, two rings around each square green, and three around the star. Pick up hoops from the left by pressing A and then drag them. <laughs> In puzzles where you have to take an object and position it. Oh yeah, talk yeah. Um, I do really like the 3D animation in the Layton's games. I think it works well with the flat backgrounds. They like, it went from flat animation and I don't think the 3D is too jarring, but it adds like a nice dimension. So good for her. I really, I, I really like Layton's aesthetic. Um, pick it up. The number displayed next to objects show how many of it are still available. Welcome to the chat room. That's not good. Uh, one ring around each blue. Oh, I see. So that would have been helpful to know at first because it's like huge. One ring around each blue. Hmm. 
and two around each green. Hang on. And three around the star. I think I see it. The star only has, yeah. There it is. Boom! Easy. E fucking Z. Still not a patch on this lake, of course. See, and then some of them are wicked fucking easy. Wicked fucking easy. Am I still alive? I need to check if I'm still alive. Beep boop, hang on. I want to know why that cleared. Why did that clear? Hang on a second. Am I still alive? Okay. Am I still alive? I oh, there I am. Hi, Boopy. Thank you. I don't know why. Did it? Did the chat room clear for you? That was really a stupid easy puzzle. Congratulations! I will perform for you my special Poponio dance. Goes like this: see pop, 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 if I'd fall over trying to do that, and I've got spare legs. Ruff. When I was a young boy back in Sangrio, I was chaperoned pop on your bopper back in the neighborhood. It cleared for me because I was clicked. Oh, okay. See, I got a sign that just said, Welcome to the chat room, and I was like, What? Because I saw my internet connection go red for a second, and I was like, Why? Um, so. <laughs> Let's see the store. I think I'll do whatever's in the store. Oh, shit, fuck, right. Game screen would be helpful. I'll do whatever's in the store, and then I think I'm gonna call it a night because I'm getting like a nice, sharp little headache. Look at the range! Complete outfits, hats, accessories. I'm sure you'd look delightful in anything at all, miss. I'd love to browse, but the investigation has to come first at the moment. Let's ask here if anyone knows anything. <laughs> I think this outfit would look nice on Catriel. Let's look for hit coins. Doo, doo, doo. Boom. Ooh. Hmm, big mirror, let me see. Ruff. I saw that show. You were checking yourself out in the mirror, making sure your coat looks sleek and your ears are inside out. No, uh, something just caught my eye, that's all. Ruff. Oh, it's a puzzle. Perfect timing. Oh, sorry. I feel like a board collie. Board collie. Uh -huh. All right. This lot love football, but their team is full of useless players that they're known as the H10. They only have 10 players. Can you move one match to turn them into an 11 player team? Press and hold A to pick up a match so you can move it around. Press L and R to rotate it. <laughs> One match. Oh. Oh. One match? That looks like a middle finger. I don't get this. Eleven player team? No. No. This is worth a hint coin. This is dumb. There's no need to rotate the match. That's what I figured.
it'll right when I do it the puzzle will finish I don't like this one Move the match from the letter H. Eleven player team? High eleven? H ten, hopeless ten. No, come here. Hmm. I could also just like do that. No, I don't like this. This is not good. What? I guess he moved the middle of the H to make it say 11 something. This is just not good though. <laughs> 11. I, I, these are the first hint coins. I used one hint coin for something else just to make sure I was doing it properly. Create some. What the fuck? Oh! There it is, one plus ten. Puzzle is something you have to chew over. Hey, that was stupid. See, this is when I dislike the latent games. Because it was 1 plus 10. Yeah. Because <laughs> sometimes they do like stupid stuff, you know? I end up, so the first few games were delightful. But in the last couple games, I think it was the Azran Legacy, I used more hint coins on stupid puzzles than I did on puzzles that were actually hard. <laughs> hmm, that was a decent puzzle. Worth doing. Now then, where's that annoying tuft? Shell, when were you last groomed? I wasn't looking. Don't worry, Shell. I'll give you a brush later. Thank you, Pinstripes. Alright. Deary me, fancy popping into you again? Oh, good evening. Doing a bit of shopping, are you? It's the last day of the Riverside Festival, isn't it? A perfect excuse to buy a new outfit to go painting the town in tonight, I say. I'm especially excited because of all the hard work Pepper, that's the mayor you know, has been putting in this year. Mayor Loanada? Oh, dear me, yes. We go back a very long way. She was often at high society dues with her father back when I was a young spring chicken. So, Miss Loanida is from a wealthy background. Yes, I must say, she's managed the family affairs wonderfully since the father passed. A credit to her name. I confess I was rather stunned when she announced she was running for mayor. Even more stunned when she won. She certainly gives the impression that proper governing of London's affairs is very important to her. Oh dear me, no. I don't think that's the reason she stood at all. I think it's fair to say the whole reason she'd be gone to become the mayor was to make the festival more festive again. Really? What do you mean exactly? Oh, I know. She seems like such a quiet thing now, doesn't she? But it wasn't ever so. No, back in her younger years, she loved a good knees up. I see. She doesn't give that impression now at all. Well, of course, her desire to promote the festival is much more than just a personal whim. She's a good heart, that girl. She wants people of London to enjoy themselves, you see. Yes, yes, I can see her motives have merit. Dear me, there I go again, wittering on. I'm supposed to be drawing a dress, buying a dress, not gossiping. Well, toodaloo. <laughs> that was unexpected revelation about May and Loanita, wasn't it? Come along, Ernest. Shell back to Guildhall. But what about the investigation, miss? There's something I'd like to put to the mayor. Come along, we must hurry. All right. 
Mayor's childhood memories. Interesting. Okay, though Kuhn collected, Mayor Loaneda was once a lively festival-loving girl. Was her motive for becoming the mayor simply to promote the festival? So clearly... Clearly... This was staged. Okay. We haven't talked to this person yet. Hello! Feel free to look around, won't you? Thank you, um, I wonder if we could ask you about the incident that occurred earlier today at the Riverside Festival? I'm afraid I have no interest in the festival. I've heard of it, but I don't know anything about it, or any incident for that matter. <laughs> oh, I see. That's the end of that conversation then, Ruff. Yes, I think you're right, Shell. Well, no matter. And back to Guildhall by bicycle. Two stage performers. Okay. So I'm also getting the sense that they were not lovers, so they were definitely hired. Um, but also I should save. Right? How do I save? Anybody remember how I fucking saved this game? Shit. Oh, right, the dog. Lightning Detective Agency! Alright, double save. Alright, it's 10 o'clock and I'm tired and I'm getting a headache, so I'm gonna end. Um, anyway... My energy is way down. Doing the voices takes a lot out of me, like constantly needing to remember exactly who, miss? Goes in between all the voices is exhausting. Um, we'll see if I keep it up the whole time. I'm gonna try. Um, but anyway, I'm gonna play Twilight Princess on Thursday. Um, I don't think I wanna raid just cause we're winding down viewer wise and I'm just really tired. Um, this DC, DMCA shit or DCMA shit, if anybody knows what's going on with that, I use a lot of lo-fi and DJ mixes at the beginning of my streams, but I'm not sure if that's enough to get me a copyright strike. Um, I really don't want a copyright strike. That would be really bad. Um, but for now, I'm going to keep going with some royalty-free music, and I had a great time playing Beethoven at the beginning. So yeah, I'll just see y'all Thursday, 7.30. I'm just going to cut it, because I am... It's like a nice little headache. It's going right through like a needle. Yeah, let me know what you find, because I'm, I'm, I think Fig Leaf is still such a new thing that everybody's like in a tizzy about it, and there's lots of stuff being thrown around, but nothing super solid. But I think either way, it's better to err on the side of caution, you know? Ugh. Anyway, thanks for hanging. We're just gonna bounce, and I'll be back on Thursday at 7.30 with Zelda. Peace.